Welcome to the Fantasy Football Forge. I'm Steve, and today we will be drafting from the 10, 11, and 12 spots of the 2022 Fantasy Football Draft. Mocking them, just really playtesting some different theories, I'll give some analysis throughout the entirety, some of my thoughts. Sometimes I will go with who I would go with, sometimes I will go with consensus. Sometimes I'll go somewhere in between. Yeah, that's basically it. I just finished recording the 7, 8, and 9 video. And we have some news updates since uh, prior to starting that recording. And I have gotten some pizza in me, so we're feeling good. Let's start out with uh, Sony Michelle did end up being signed by the Chargers. I don't know how much this changes. My thought has always been that they want to... I, I spoke about it in the last video. I don't know how much this changes anything. If you are trying to hold on to a handcuff for Eckler, I have a lot of thoughts on that, and I don't know which ones are right. I think my best advice would be hope Eckler can stay safe for at least like the first four weeks or something, and then maybe take Isaiah Spiller around that time. I think he's just a little bit behind, maybe taking time to learn things, or maybe just physically a little bit behind. Whatever the case, I think after a few weeks in the season, he becomes the best backup to own. But right now, if you really wanted to gun to my head, I think Josh Kelly still gets more opportunities and is probably just a split backfield between him and Sony Michelle in the meantime. Other than that, Jalen Rager went to the Vikings. KJ Osborne fans get scared. I don't know. Um, worst case scenario, KJ Osborne's in trouble. Other than that, it's no news there, really. I don't know how to t how to tell you to use that for fantasy knowledge. Um, if you believe that is a risk, then, you know, move K.J. Osborne down, put him on your do not draft list, or something like that. So, today we will be starting from the 10 spot. I will go over all of the settings of what we are drafting under 12-team league, half PPR, by the way. And uh, from the 10 spot here, Joe Mixon, I, I, I have him ranked higher than Saquon. That was looking nice there. I have him as my RB number four. So it was just kind of a have to have to get him. Although I do have Stefan Diggs technically as a better value than my second tier of running back. Either way, I think I was going with a safe pick. Joe Mixon could end up as the RB four. That's for sure. But he's not going to end up as the RB1, I don't think is in the possibility quite for him. He is just a uh, uh, the safe pick, and that is why I have him over some of these other folks. Moving on, got Nick Chubb around that next turn. Another guy, uh, I don't know about the ceiling, uh, at least until like we get into the fantasy playoffs. Then he might get a ceiling when Deshaun Watson comes back. But even that's not a guarantee because Deshaun Watson... Did not look good in his limited opportunities in the preseason. It's been a long time since he played. So if he's not in immediate threat, which he might be because of his legs, but either way, if he comes out week one and looks blah, um, defenses will still be able to key in on that run then to a certain extent at least. So not a huge upside. It's, it's a trust in the talent. It's a bit of a trust in my projections. It's um, a bit of... Other guys, like an Aaron Jones, are just in situations where I, I don't expect them to get as many opportunities, and there's some risk there. It's it's a combination of factors. This year, that might be the theme. There's a lot of guys that move up spots, not solely based on their own merits, but because of um, a lack of merits in other situations that are concerning for certain players. Follow that up with Michael Pittman. Love him as a wide receiver one if you go um, RB, RB. He's a great guy for that. And then went with the board, basically. My board took Brees Hall. I'm never afraid to go running back strong. There are always wide receivers that you can find, and um, you could find better wide receivers than I did on this. You will see I went incredibly strong at the running back position, and I just figured I would cut that off at five there. So Brandon Cooks, I don't know if he's a value where he's getting drafted this season, but uh, just solid. He was, he was the most upside, most solid combination wide receiver. We wanted that on this team. So took him, followed the board there. A.J. Dillon, 
went down my board personally just a little bit to take him, knowing that I didn't have to risk Damian Pierce. But um, this may not be possible if you are drafting after this video is being released. Damian Pierce will be going up on charts, but he may not be going up in every league. So I figured, hey, we'll do what's available to us. So this might be a bit of a dream roster, uh, at least at running back uh, in modern times. Moving on, I took wide receivers. Went Hunter Renfro, Alan Lazard, not somebody I would take. But either way, don't hate him, especially for this roster. He, he'll get just enough work to be fantasy, viable, usable, in, uh, in any situation that I may end up needing to use him, and then there's some upside to him. So, uh, you know, whatever. I went with the consensus board on that pick just to help show you something that maybe you would like more than me, but at least to show you what you could do if you were to do something extreme like this at the running back position with your wide receivers and the other positions and what that would look like. So follow that up with a Garrett Wilson I take MVS over Garrett Wilson, better quarterback, more experienced player, probably similar um, week, week in and week out expectations as far as they may not be the most consistent players. And I, I don't know that Garrett Wilson has a, there's a better chance that he's more consistent than MVS. I think there's a decent chance that MVS is fairly consistent. So wouldn't be my pick. Same with George Pickens. Wouldn't be my pick. I just don't think there's going to be enough opportunities for him that you would ever be trusting in putting him into your lineup. And it's just going to come down to, you know, he has a big blow-up week or two huge weeks, so you end up putting him in, and then he does nothing type of situation. I don't like those. I don't love having these two pit guys. I didn't think about that. But, hey, George is way down on the roster. So follow that up. Finally, we get in our quarterback. We snapped as soon as we could, as soon as we felt that those quarterbacks were going to start to um, get taken, and luckily we got a heads up on that, and we took Trey Lance there. If I'm taking Trey Lance in a draft, I'm probably taking two quarterbacks, and this is the kind of draft, if you're going with all of your running backs and wide receivers up front, type of draft that I would even suggest, go right ahead, take two quarterbacks or two tight ends. I was kind of planning on going two tight end, but Justin Fields, Tua, both got taken. And um, once again, Trey Lance, I'm, I'm going with two quarterbacks. Or even Kirk Cousins would be a nice, safe guy for this roster. But I think we're a little safe on this roster, so we want a little juice. And then Pat Fryermuth, once again, uh, just closing out the tight ends. Uh, he is, I think, sustainable as the tight end. I don't like trying to play the matchups at tight end. It's just too infrequent to be able to predict for any tight end except for the top one to five tight ends, depending on the season. Other than that, you're no better off playing the odds than you are trying to play the matchups in my research. Follow that up with getting our backup quarterback. Did not want to risk not getting Trevor Lawrence. He could be here still, but wasn't about to risk it, so... Got our backup to Trey Lance. You could say Trevor's risky, but I really don't know how risky he is. He's going to have much better, friendlier coaching staff there to, um, who has specifically been handpicked to tailor to Trevor Lawrence to pick him up, make him a better quarterback in a system that will be passing a fair amount. He's really going to have to be a, a quarterback bust in order for him to not be fantasy decent this year, I think. He's got the weapons around him. Maybe not a world-class defense on the other side of the ball. A hard-working defense, but not world-class to where it's not like they're just going to be able to run games out all season long. So, like that upside in case, anyways. And followed up with, oh, our Green Bay Packers defense. Um, went Trevor Lawrence instead of getting our number one D. But if you've seen my other videos, you know I love the Green Bay Packers defense. So, was happy with that and kicker. I would be comfortable bringing this roster into the season. I would think I have a good shot at making the playoffs. I'm going to be just cruising through those bye weeks games and whomping on people with my Jeff. It's going to be a matter of having found the proper gold to bring this team over the hump for against the cream of the crop teams in the league because I don't know 
that I outright current as the team sits right now. I don't know that I have enough juice to get over, uh, you know, the 150-point uh, the weeks that some opponents may put up during the playoffs, uh, especially as you get into, you know, those final four teams. To the settings real quick, 12-team league is what we are drafting from, from the 10th position for this, and then we'll do two in the 11th, two in the 12th. Um, just previous, just a heads up, I did use my rankings for that previous draft. If you're doing last minute homework for your draft and you come across this video and you say, hey, I want to use that dude's rankings, I would not recommend my rankings for that. I think my rankings do require you to be looking up and down the board a little bit. They are a little bit projections biased. So there is, there are some guys that maybe have better potential uh, who, who would be further down on the rankings at times. Half PPR settings. One quarterback, two run, running back, two wide receiver, one tight end, one flex wide receiver, running back, tight end, seven bench spots, a kicker, a DST, normal settings. Um, keep this all clicked so we could get the most random, uh, hopefully, uh, uh, picks going on to hopefully best represent all the scenarios that we may come across in the draft of players that may or may not make it to certain spots. Then we will use the Fantasy Pros cheat sheet. I have to say, from this um, spot, it's hard not to recommend running backs. DeAndre or Saquon Barkley? I have DeAndre higher in my rankings as well as they do. Devontae Adams, I love. I, I didn't know who to put below him in my rankings. However, I will not be surprised at all if he disappoints with where he is being drafted just a, a changing in the team's system quarterback he's not going to have the same amount of targets i don't think uh as he has had in previous seasons there's just going to be other guys that are going to jump up and do better than him this season in my opinion we do love a dj Moore type what if you wanted a tight end i don't think Pitts is a worth it. Let's see if he comes around to our four spot. I do like DJ more. Went over that in the previous video more than um, some of the guys around him. I'm not super comfortable with the fact that I like him more than them, but I do like him more than a Cortland Sutton, a Mike Williams, a Deontay Johnson, a Jerry McLo uh, Terry McLaurin, a Brandon Cooks, a Jalen Waddle, even a DK Metcalf. Uh, yeah. I've, I've run into this issue previously. Going running back heavy, uh, to me, always kind of feels lame right around with these guys. And then I feel good about it for a little while again. But um, it just feels like these guys are kind of worth it around this point of the draft. And if you don't feel comfortable going super heavy at the running back position, then just get two wide receivers in these first three picks because there's going to be a guy or two that you should like in that fourth, fifth round, especially if we see Damian Pierce sn um, sniffing the th fourth or coming into the fifth round at least somewhat regularly, then um, there's just enough guys there that you could get one or two at the fourth, fifth spot, in, um, especially from this uh, position in the draft. We'll go... Deontay, uh, there's still so much upside with him. Good receiver. Don't love the quarterback there. But um, he should be more efficient than he has been in recent years. Could we go for a JK? Let's say we don't like that. We're a little scared. Um, Darnell Mooney, Gabriel Davis. Once again, I prefer Gabe. Trying to come up with an argument for Darnell Mooney. I just don't feel it. I don't I don't go Gabe there. We are in the sixth round and maybe we'll do something that I, okay, well So let's just say we like to have our fill out our positions for the most part when we can. So we took a quarterback there. It looks like some tight ends are going quick in this draft. TJ, Dalton Schultz. Same with quarterbacks. So maybe that was a good thing we went ahead and took Kyler there. But there's always more quarterbacks. Uh, when we get 
to this tier, I find some clear standouts. To me, it's Choni Pollard and um, sort of Ramondre, but I think the one that just stands out to me, we need a third running back. Oh, for once, I actually need Tony Pollard when I draft him. I just am um, pretty, pretty high up on him this season for where he's getting drafted. James Cook isn't bad. Cream Hunt wouldn't be shabby. Dallas Goddard. We saw all those tight ends go. We don't need that. Uh, let's shore up. Running backs are more important than wide receiver. We'll go with Ramondre. Um, he's a good guy. Good guy to have. We'll go with Alexander Madison. I haven't taken him yet. He's a good backup. It's a slight reach, but I didn't know who to take. Who got taken? Ronnie Mostert. Um, not bad. J.D. McKissick. Fine with taking Alexander Madison over him. Adam Thielen. George, Pick George Pickens. Oh, Rondale Moore might have been. Might have been somebody that I would have liked. I keep not seeing his name. And I think we're afraid of Goddard going at this point. So we'll get our tight end. Uh, don't take Isaiah Spiller in the draft. Take him, Pick him up later in the season, probably. But we will put Brian Robinson in our bench and pick up something, somebody. Maybe another, um, take an extra pot shot at our wide receiver. All right, so I went with um, Julio Jones, Christian Watson, K.J. Osborne, my last three picks here, and I am looking at the DSTs. And we got New Orleans, Los Angeles Chargers, Green Bay Packers. We all know what I think of both of these teams. What do I think of the Chargers? I think they're a sleeper. They could definitely be a surprise defense. So I don't mind that. Uh, here is one of my... I think I have him actually ranked as like my second kicker or something. Evan McPherson's awesome. Yeah, I mean, this is not my favorite roster. It is a comfortable roster, though. At Kyler Murray and uh, Dallas Goddard and our positions. Uh, the LA Chargers, the only thing is... What's their... We'll try to remember to look at that, see who they play in the first few weeks. I feel like they don't have a very favorable starting roster. And uh, that's the other thing, too. Um, that division that they are in is a, yeah, tough, a tough, a tough one. So there will be a lot of matchups that you probably won't feel comfortable going into the game with the Chargers. Um so, yeah, I mean, uh, periphery positions are great. So let's look at our main. Najee Harris, DeAndre Swift, and backing that up, we've got Tony Pollard, Ramondre Stevenson, Alexander Madison in case, Brian Robinson sitting there in the just waiting. Oh, that's yawning today. Brian Robinson sitting waiting, and we called it a day there. Slightly thin at a position you don't necessarily want to be thin at, but, yeah. No, we have four of them to fill in two spots. I do think, do not think we need to go running back at a flex unless, you know, we're just feeling it or a situation calls for it. So our wide receivers, DJ Moore, Deontay Johnson, obviously going to be every week starters. Gabriel Davis, I think, an every week starter. So doing great there. Julio Jones, I think, will probably be an every week uh, at least flex. And then <clears throat> Christian Watson, um, I, I think sim I think he will have a floor and a potential ceiling. This Green Bay offense is probably going to be putting a lot of different players out there at different times, but I do think Christian Watson will be one that will uh, not get subbed out too often. He has one of the more versatile skill sets, which is something that they're going to like uh, in Green Bay. I think the ball is going to be spread around a fair amount. And then we ended up taking K.J. Osborne. I'm not really too afraid of Jalen Rager anyways. It's uh, been a long time since Minnesota's had a third wide receiver that could be relevant. But I would not be surprised either way. Uh, if I'm wrong here, it's not like a prediction. But I would not be surprised if K.J. Osborne were to outperform uh, an Adam Thielen fantasy-wise. Well, we've seen me take Joe Mixon here. 
we've seen running backs um, from the 10 spot, not here. I would take Joe Mixon. But we're going to take Stephon Diggs because we think he's worth it. And a, a tight end. Whichever tight end you have is your number one. I have a different number one tight end. I think it's worth taking the other number one there, potentially two. Um, yeah, I can't turn down Pittman here this late in the third. So we got Diggs, Pittman, Kelsey. Looks nice. I've said this in other videos. Um, so even from here, always good to know what your opponent has. Um, Corlin Sutton and Mike Williams aren't quite worth it for me, so I will go with the ITN. And we need another running back? That works out. Yeah. Okay. Pretty fair and balanced. Um, J.K. Dobbins or Josh Jacobs? The ceiling goes to J.K. Dobbins. And that's true. I, I shouldn't have been too afraid of a running back getting taken there. So... What, why, what quarterbacks are left? And Jalen Hurts very well may be worth taking at uh, early sixth round here. Uh, that's where you're going to have to take him if you want to take him. And he, I think, is a separate, um, or the closest maybe to the this tier of quarterbacks compared to anybody else. Uh, you know, basically, he has the upside that he's already proven. Previously, let's go with a, a wide receiver. So here we know we don't need to take a quarterback. Prior. And if we think we're going to take a quarterback, then we know we're going to miss out on a lot of these guys. Yeah, Etienne Dobbins, not the sexiest. honestly out of these guys Tony Pollard is like the least concern for me you know what um, I'll go Chase he now that it's just too I, I am a little bit more high on Chase he's a little higher than I previously was um, a little better now that there isn't like a three headed horse workhorse um, of running backs that we have to worry about in Miami. That's when you would need to be taking your quarterback. So now it's just kind of zig and zag between wide receiver and running back. And right now it looks like the values at running back take Daryl Henderson. To me, it's between Garrett Wilson and Valdez Scantling. And like I've said in the past, I take MVS here. Oh, Rondale Moore was there. Okay, so after Marquez and after I freaked out a little bit that I will never, ever get Rondale Moore now that I finally like him a little bit even. Just not going to happen. So i uh, got Khalil Herbert, Deontay Foreman to um, at backup running backs here. Some extra bodies in case of injuries. And Jahan Dawson to add a little extra juice into that wide receiving core. We need, oh, I still have room for another receiver or running back. We will go receiver. I'm not in love with Joshua Palmer's standalone value, so I go KJ over him. Ben Jefferson definitely did some stuff last season, and yeah, I mean, there's a definite chance he could do that again. If he's um, not out there, not healthy by week one, anyways, we can just replace him with somebody. There will be wide receivers that will do things season long still available on the waiver wires, and we'll just take a uh, defense. And a kicker. All right, so I, uh, I went out of that screen on accident. So here is our team. We went Stephon Diggs, Travis Kelsey, Michael Pittman to start out. And then got ourselves a couple of running backs. Should be starting running backs. So solid. And uh, Darnell Mooney to fill up that probably that flex spot. And especially with J.K. It's questionability. We'll chase Edmondson uh, at running back here and Daryl Henderson and Herbert as our backup running backs. Russell Wilson, we nabbed at the uh, last second to fill up our quarterback position and feel comfortable there so we could take a few more um, hits at other positions like Deontay Foreman. Um, you know, there is a running back in Carolina who has not had the best health 
track record as of late. So I uh, do believe Deontay would take over. His duties do not believe that they were too happy with how Cheba took over that role last year and must have liked what they saw in Foreman, and I don't think that he's done anything in the offseason to dissuade them from um, liking him in the event of needing him. Could be wrong. Maybe Chubb is still that, still that guy. And then um, for wide receiver, receivers, the rest of them, MVS, I just I can't help that value. Jahan Dotson, another upside, uh, quite a bit of upside there on that, the back end of that roster, but we feel pretty darn comfortable with our top two to three there. Maybe not my favorite roster as far as feeling completely complete right off of the bat, but... Yeah, that's pretty solid for getting, uh, especially for spending up for a tight end right there. I don't love it. I feel like if you're going to go tight end, it's a little better maybe right around here. Just as far as when you come back around here, some of the talent that's going to be there and here again. I think that was our second draft from the 11th spot, so I'm, I've started off with the uh, 12th spot. So, um... I have no arguments with DeAndre Swift at the end of the first round. Uh, could he, could definitely be. Heck, he has the ceiling of an RB1, would probably take an injury, or mm, two, three, maybe, but um, could definitely end the season as an RB1. Uh, same with Kamara is great. Um, it's not looking... Do I like Kamara or Saquon better Trying to think of what we've done with these drafts. Let's just try to take the most even-keeled roster that we can. So we go running back, wide receiver. I mean, we've spoken on this. We like this value. And I, I go David Montgomery over Travis Etienne. A little safer. Ooh, Lamar's going to make it to us at the end of the fifth, beginning of the sixth. Not shabby. I do have that as a tier with him in... Uh, Kyler Murray, and if you like Lamar better, don't like much from running back as we're going to come back around. Let's take ourselves two running backs. Uh, once again, Damian Pierce may not always be here, but that opens up, that'll open up talent in other places. Oh no, I took him in the sixth, so that might be quite realistic. Steelen Ayuk feels like a, um, Something I haven't done. Right now, it's not it's not a bad spot to attack quarterback, but I like this other tier here, too. Um, we'll do it. I'm going to be curious to see if Raheem Mostert makes it around to... Uh, be around 12? Probably not, huh? And we're going to get my Rondale Moore. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm looking at everything, and it just feels like now is the time to go, so... Get a probably almost guaranteed like top six quarterback ish. One of my favorite backup running backs. So I feel um, pretty good about early season being able to fill out my roster. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, take a Michael Gallup. I think we should be able to put him on our IR spot, anyways, and pick up something, um, especially like after week one, that'll be nice. Somebody who pops off on the waiver wire um, and obviously take an attempt at somebody prior to the week. Yeah, Cole Komet. I think we'll do a two tight end here. Irv Smith is um, back and looking healthy. If, if I hadn't taken what's his nuts. Yeah, you know, it just feels like a roster. Scoop up one of our favorite DSTs. Yeah, they go at that point, and we'll take a kicker because tight ends. Okay, um, Joku, Gerald Everett, both, and then Evan Ingram's a sleeper. I mean, uh, take your pick. Brevin Jordan, somebody I really like for the most part. Um, Mowally Cox is, yeah, definitely a sleeper. 
So then you take your pick. But uh, David Njoku is going to have a quarterback who probably gives him the ball a lot. So how do we like this roster? Joe Burrow at quarterback, solid. DeAndre Swift, David Montgomery. I don't mind it. Um, the fact that I have to say that. Do have David and Cole Kmet. Although we do think that maybe Montgomery uh, doesn't catch the ball at least early season as much, and Cole Kmet will get some of those targets. So, you know, they're working hand-in-hand hand with each other. We have uh, Damian Harris, Damian Pierce, Damian Bros backing us up at running back. Adam Thielen, Brandon Ayuk, Rondale Moore, Michael Gallup for wide receiver backups. I like that. It, it feels like a good roster. And between Michael Gallup, David Njoku, especially those two at least, we have um, a little bit of flexibility in those early weeks to make some moves without feeling like we are uh, leaving something potentially out for somebody else to get. So, awesome. One more to go, I think. Now we'll go for my rankings. So this time I'm going to go ahead and do it. Let's just see here. We go Mark Andrews. We, we did tight end already. Oh, well. Okay, so I just went off the rails. We're just going to have fun with this. I'm um, done with this. So... Uh, yeah, I I just, um, I don't know when the last time, I think we might have seen me take DJ Moore, maybe Brees Hall, I don't know. Nick Chubb, Brees Hall, DJ Moore, then I went Damian Pierce, Clyde, Tony Pollard, Ken Walker. So, we are going to always have three tight ends to play. That's the plan, I thought that last year, and I ended up actually having to um, not be able to play three tight ends always. So, oh, MV, uh, well, all right, just scooped up Garrett Wilson and Mark has felt a scant lean for my uh, wide receiver two collection. Looks like the wide receivers have been pretty chewed up, chewed up already. So, we'll get me a wide receiver, a quarterback. Um, we might feel the need to play some matchups. So, all right, so ended up going Russell Wilson, Matt Stafford, followed with Sammy Watkins, Isaiah McKenzie. Um, Sammy's going to be on the field for Green Bay, so we'll take that for as long as he's healthy. Not only did I ignore running back, but I'm also thin at wide receiver, much less only at five wide receivers, but we need to pick a kicker and a DST. You know what, let's do that thing where we pretend we don't have to pick a kicker. Because some leagues are like that. So maybe this could be a strategy for a league that's like that. Look at that, get my number four DST. And then we say we need some more upside. Um, James Prochet feels like a decent upside guy. Paris Campbell, yes. Byron Pringle could be fine for fantasy. Alex Pierce, upside. Um, ignore them. What are the experts? What do the experts think? Yeah, Marvin Jones is the guy to pick, but... What with Paris Campbell there? Um, that was... Uh, this is a fun team. <laughs> I don't know how comfortable I would feel with them, but I... I don't think I'm coming in last place in the league. You got Russell Wilson, Nick Chubb, Brees Hall, and then Damian Pierce, Tony Pollard, Kenneth Walker, all just waiting for each other to get injured. Well, Kenny's starting injured, so um, there's that. So we are not um, hoping to ever have to go and find a running back on the waiver wire, which they are one of the easier ones to find on the waiver wire. That is why zero RB strategy can work. Um, it's just reliant on doing the work in season and uh, not necessarily getting lucky, but, you know, relying on what seems to happen year in and year out. So 
usually happens that there will be running backs available throughout the season that are definitely usable. And between finding some gems at running back and having advantages at the other positions, you can win a league. So, um, yeah, strong, strong, strong running back. And then DJ Moore uh, as our starting wide receiver, fine with that. Garrett Wilson at wide receiver two. Um, I mean, it doesn't look pretty now, but who knows? Who knows? Followed that up. Marquez Valdez Scantling. I I would probably week one have him here. Same with the. I mean, Sammy Watkins. I I have enough faith in six to eight targets a game. Uh, should be fine. I mean, maybe not that many every game average, but most games, depending on the opponent and how much we'll be able to run or not as the game goes along. Isaiah McKenzie, really like that as a nice safety pick, and Paris Campbell as an upside pick there for wide receivers. And then Russell Wilson and Matt Stafford just trying to play the matchups a little bit there at quarterback uh, to try and make up for whatever edge we may have lost at our wide receiver too by going crazy at running back. Do I recommend drafting like this? No. Could it be fine once you get into the season? Sure. Yeah. Why not? Why not? <laughs> so this is um, an interesting team. Maybe you love it. I don't know. Uh, but a good way to see what kind of wide receiver makeup you could get late there if you were to go absolutely nuts at running back. Now, if you replace one of those running backs with a receiver, uh, with a quarterback early, and make this like uh, Josh Allen, how do you how do you like that? That might be a better way to look at this. So yeah, we'll just we'll need to um, drop someone before week one. And so we'll just hope there's um, an injury or no injuries or Kenneth Walker we might be able to put on our in our IR spot for um, week one, depending on your league settings and just put a kicker in there and then drop him again, bring Kenny activate Kenny Walker after the week. Let's see if anybody loved it. This is this is how the real world works. Uh, might have gotten a C minus overall. Did not get any Fs. Now I've, I've drafted. I've had some you know really well graded drafts, and have an F sitting over here. So uh, this roster is not irredeemable that I just drafted. <laughs> it, it was cool. I, I really don't hate it. I'm out. Peace. Love you. Thank you so much for everything. I'll be setting up my desk and everything for the next few days and. I'll probably be on the Excel sheet updating all of my rosters and everything for projections for the regular season coming here soon. So might be a little bit before my next video. Might go all the way and finishing week one rankings, depending on how quickly I do everything. Yeah. Bye.